problem, we're given a differential equation. It's a first order differential equation. And we're also given some, or an initial condition. And we're asked to solve the following problem. Now, with this kind of problem, uh, and in fact, all sorts of first order differential equations, one thing that I like to do is to classify them via the SHIELDS, the SHIELDS acronym. So each letter in the word SHIELD stands for a type of differential equation. Okay, so. <clears throat> Shields. Now, so each letter stands for a type of first order differential equation or something related to its solution method. So the S here stands for separable. The H stands for homogeneous. The I stands for, well, I'll, I'll leave the I for a minute. The E stands for exact. The L stands for linear. Uh, the D stands for direct substitute, uh, direct integration. So L stands for linear. So you can solve something sometimes via direct integration. And the S down the bottom, well, I've already used separable. Sometimes you can solve ODEs by substitution. Now the I here is an integrating, stands for integrating factor. So essentially integrating factors are not only used to solve linear problems, but if you um, want to make uh, a particular ODE exact, well, you sometimes can multiply through by an integrating factor. So half the battle with these problems is actually classifying what kind of differential equation have I got from this list. Now with this one, it's very easy. It's separable, okay? Because I can separate the variables in this um, problem and I can integrate both sides. Okay, so um, the, the problem that we're considering is actually the first one. It's a separable differential equation. Okay, so the OD is separable since we can separate the variables. Now by separating the variables, I mean you, you separate via multiplication or division. So here think I can bring this differential dx up to the left hand side. Okay, so I've separated the variables now. I've got all the y's and the dy's on one side, all the x's and the dx's on the other. And what I can do is just integrate both sides. Okay, so this is hyperbolic sec, by the way, hyperbolic sec squared. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I'm integrating with respect to y. On the right-hand side, I'm integrating with respect to x. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to get something like a half y squared. On the right-hand side, I'm going to get something like this. Now, the integral of hyperbolic sec squared or shek squared, anyone know it? Hyperbolic tan, hyperbolic tan. Okay, so think of the relationship between um, the derivative of tan, not hyperbolic, just tan, and sec squared. The derivative of tan is sec squared, and it's a, sort of an analog with the hyperbolic functions as well. Okay, here's C is a constant of integration. So all I, all I really need to do now, or all I would like to do, is take this two to the other side uh, and you know simplify. Now, I have a choice here. I can either put the C in brackets here, 
or form a new constant, k. I'm just doing that to make it a bit, bit more pretty. Okay? Now, if you don't like that, you can always keep put, put this in the bracket and you'd have 2c instead of k in here. <coughs> Okay, so now what? We've got a general solution to our differential equation in implicit form. What we'd like to do is determine the value of k via this initial condition. Okay, so... So we know that when x equals 0, our our solution, y, has the value 2. So just going back to our general form of solution, we can use this information by substituting or replacing y with 2 and x with 0. So the left-hand side is just 2 squared. This term's going to be 0 because we're plugging in x equals 0. Hyperbolic tan of 0. Well, the curve goes through the origin, so that's also 0. So this thing's got 0, so what will k be? k will be 4. So our solution, then, that satisfies the original differential equation subject to the initial condition is this with k equals 4.